Hey friends, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. As you can see, I've got a lovely friend over there <laughs> working really hard. As Sean is over here tonight making some modifications on our rabbit tractor. Um, I've showed this to you in several videos just kind of like glancing by. I haven't really talked about it in depth, uh, but I wanted to because many of you guys had asked. You wanted to know about the rabbit tractor, how it's made, its purpose, kind of all the bells and whistles and why we chose to go with this route. So, Sean is over here making modifications and I thought what a better time now to explain to you why we're making these modifications um, and just a lot of the different things about the rabbit tractor. So we'll head over there and talk to him right now. You can work. <laughs> Get to work. Get to work. So as you guys can see, our rabbit tractor is upside down. This is one of the first things we're making uh, modifications on. We had before these slants and then also uh, this wire <laughs> and the rabbits dug out because that's what they do. So we're now modifying. So Sean ran to go grab a tripod so I could prop you guys up and show you at a better level up. But we're really just gonna talk to you guys about kind of you know our vision we really told you guys we you know had originally done cages for our rabbits we still do have some of our rabbits in cages we will be getting another one of these whenever we move but our heart was really just to get them on grass we feel like it was really important for the animal the quality of life that they had which was obviously really important for us and just allow them to graze on grass our plan when we move uh, to the new house is uh right off the bat we're actually going to be grazing them in the backyard because that is the place that has the most established grass on it uh, but we are going to immediately put emphasis on growing grass in other areas and actually we're going to be making or attempting to make some sort of a rabbit colony which we think will be really cool um, if we end up doing that we'll obviously take you guys along for the journey there uh, but in the meantime this has been a really good resource and it's super versatile on what we can use it for uh, so i'm excited to just kind of ask sean those questions that you guys have been asking me this is obviously not my area of expertise uh, so we're just talking to the expert good job sean thanks all right so you want to give us one your vision behind wanting to build these. Okay. So like your vision behind why you wanted to do these and then the specs of the actual rabbit tractor. So I guess first thing, it's in progress. Yes. It's still in development <laughs> and it's hopefully gonna be shipped in end of July, beginning of August. Okay, cool. Lower 48 Yeah. is the goal. Yeah. So this is basically a modification of the Elliott Coleman Chickshaw and the Justin Rhodes Chickshaw. Okay. So Ellie Coleman first came out with an all metal, basically miniature greenhouse chickshaw, mm -hmm. like in the seventies or eighties. Um, but you know, most people don't have like a way of like bending metal and all the fasteners, all that stuff you'd need. Um, and so for him, it made sense cause he has this big market garden. He has all these metal bending type things for hoop houses. Yeah. And so, um, Justin Rhodes came out with a wooden one. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's great for folks like, dabbling into it and they can build it themselves and go through that whole process. I guess I just, I saw a need for um, like greater durability Yeah. from, from like a yeah. lot of the, the mobile chicken tractors mm -hmm. and chicken schooners and stuff that yeah. I was seeing. Um, like online, I'm, I might see ones that are like made out of PVC and there's YouTube videos about that. Um, that PVC will tend to break down in the sun and then it cracks and then you just gotta throw the whole thing away. And so, you know, for making, you know, we started off making the greenhouses um, and really wanted to make them out of quality yeah. products, so they're all metal. Yeah. Um, and then I wanted to kind of take that same principle of thoughtful design and put it to the chicken coop. So it's all metal with the exception of your rabbit tractor has the wooden slats. Yeah, which this can also be a chicken schooner. He actually made one of these for my sister. So we'll touch on that mm -hmm. too, because this is kind of dual purpose. He is modifying this for me for our rabbits, but it, can be done for chickens. Yeah, it's primarily for chickens. Primarily for chickens. Yeah. Okay. So, so the idea was to make something that was durable, that would yeah. last for decades, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, that is really flexible. So, if you had it for chickens, you said you don't want chickens. It's a dog coop. If you, you know, we talked yeah. about that in that yeah. video we did about the the greenhouses. Yeah. Like, if you don't want it to be a greenhouse anymore, it's a chicken coop. If you yeah. don't want to be a chicken coop, it's a carport. If you, yeah. and so I'm a, a big believer in like designing things. And if you're, especially if you're trying to, you know, be sustainable on the farm and on the homestead, 
you don't want to just be a homestead that just consumes a lot of stuff, throws a lot of stuff away. Yeah, I love that. And so really durable things that last a long time mm -hmm. can be used for different reasons. So this uh, upside down turtle <laughs> right now, um, the mindful uh, farmer uh, grazer is, is this model, uh, is really meant to be versatile. So it can be used for broiler chickens. Um, you could probably put, you know, 24 broiler chickens in there and just pulling them to fresh grass every day. Mm -hmm. um, Jill and Nathan are using it for their rabbits. So they're, what, do you, what would you call those? Like the grower rabbits? They're not the breeders, but they're the... The meat rabbits? Meat rabbits? Yeah, the feeder rabbits. Feeder, feeders, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they're getting fresh grass every day, yeah. moved to fresh pasture. Mm -hmm. um, so it cuts on your feed costs. Um, and so the only modification we're really doing for that is we're just adding these wooden strips and it's probably about 40 bucks worth of, of wood. Yeah. Um, and then the second model we'll have is the uh, Ranger, which will be on wheels. So that's more of like the Chickshaw, gotcha. Elliot Coleman, Justin yeah. Rhodes Chickshaw that people might be familiar with. So that'll be um, automatic door up on wheels. You can move at larger distances, uh, day range with a large electric fence. Yeah. And that's more meant for like, if you had like 50 laying hens, wow. you could put them in a, um, the Ranger. Yeah. So something else that I wanted to talk to you about because they did see this kind of, um, we were like his model, right? Like we were your the guinea pigs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wasn't going to just say guinea pigs. But <laughs> <laughs> so when they saw this before, they saw it with the metal roof and now mm -hmm. we are making modifications to that as well. Yeah. Um, because sometimes I am out here trying to move it myself. Um, and so do you want to talk about why we're kind of switching that out? Cause that is something that they will see differently too. Yeah. Whenever we kind of go back and, you know, yeah. recap all of this, we're moving from the metal to a, a plastic. Yeah. It's, it's a woven UV treated plastic. So okay. it should last up like 10 years wow. and then it's okay. recyclable. So yeah. then you can recycle it okay. and get a, a new piece. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's something too, that we can send in the mail for like really affordable for just this sheet yeah. of, yeah. of plastic. Um, so the reason why, why I went to the plastic one, it makes it lighter. And then two, it also will help give like a heat bump in the winter time. Okay. So in the winter time, it's almost like a greenhouse. You could really even theoretically, uh, brood your chickens out here. Wow. Once it's all closed up for okay. the winter time. That's cool. So it's basically a miniature greenhouse in the winter time. I have a picture on my Instagram of the one I did for your sister. Okay. And you can see the shade cloth on top of it. Okay, so it's yeah. a 90% shade cloth. Rabbits tend to like full shade because they're nocturnal animals. Mm -hmm. Chickens don't really like full shade. They actually like and thrive from a little bit of light. So having the clear plastic to keep the rain off, but then the 90% shade cloth keeps them cool, but gives them enough light to still yeah. be active during the day. Okay, man, you are just like full of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so how big is this? So, Did you already say that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, well, no, I didn't say that. Okay, okay. So the whole, the footprint for this thing is uh, six by eight okay. for like what the animals have access to. And then with the handles, it would be, you know, eight by eight. Okay. About. We use um, this model, you know, without the wooden floor, the, our chickens, our laying hens have access to the grass. Oh yeah. A, I, the video I did at Sean, you guys saw yeah, yeah, that. The, yeah, the, the flower video. Yeah. Um, so there's a rollaway nest box on the back of it. And that's something too, that like the base kit doesn't come with that. So if someone wants to save um, some money and they already have a nest box, they could mount their own nest box. Yeah. They could modify it however they want to, to cut costs. I love the rollaway nest boxes because mm -hmm. then you don't have to go inside. You don't have to touch yucky yeah. stuff. You just, yeah. <laughs> you just grab, grab the <laughs> eggs from the outside of the coop. Um, and that's all things that I will have on my website to, yeah. to link to. But we're doing 16 laying hens in this and we're just moving them to fresh grass every two days. Okay. Um, Cause they're not fully laying, they're not full hens yet. Yeah. They're still pullets. Um, and our grass has never looked better. Yeah, your like, grass looks so good. They've gotten rid of all the sticker burrs. Wow. They've, they've eaten them out of the grass. That's and so awesome. it's just like pure grass now. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. And after about a week and a half, you can't even tell where they've been at all. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so even, a dozen laying hens could be done in this. You wouldn't even have to range them. You could just move it forward every day. So yeah, so the footprint of this thing is 48 square feet, okay. six by eight. Um, an acre is about f just shy of 44,000 square feet. Okay. So you can move this thing about 900 times on one acre, like a wow. football field, yeah. and never graze the same grass twice. That's so cool. I'm gonna throw some other, I'm just, he has no idea, bless his heart. I like, we haven't prepared him for any of these questions, you guys. <laughs> so what is the benefit? Cause some of you guys may think, well, why would I, you know, how much are you selling these for? Just the basic kit. The basic kit is 750. 750. And that does include shipping. So it would be shipped as a, like a symbol, 
pre-assembled kit. Okay, so, so $750, that's what we have paid this for. Some of you may be thinking, well, why would I spend $750 on this? Like, you need to know the value. I'm one of those people, you know? So what is the value of grazing your animals on grass? How can you use this to prepare, you know, other grounds for flowers or, or whatever? You know, we have our rabbits, like I mentioned earlier in this video, in cages, and like, we don't feel good about that on so many different levels. <laughs> So we were at a place where we were willing to do whatever to get our rabbits out of cages, back to grass, how they are intended to live in the best, you know, like yeah. we just want to feel good about the process. So if you will just tell them one, the benefit of having your animals on grass, how you can also use this for dual purpose, like you have done, you had your chickens where now your flowers are and you guys saw how beautiful, you know, his tunnel was, how many flowers you're cranking out. And so I just think that that's a really important message is, how valuable this is to have your animals on grass. Yeah. I mean, there's there's so many benefits to it. <laughs> like, it's hard to, I mean, like putting animals on grass and having good impact, um, like anytime you have animals, any, anytime there's people, like you can't avoid impacting the natural world. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. But there's good impact and there's bad impact. And so moving animals in like high intensity, high frequency, which is like the Joel Salatin way of moving cows and pigs, um, it has a net benefit for the grass. Like yeah. I said, our, our grass has never looked better. Yeah. It's been like less weedy, stronger, thicker. Um, the chickens help dethatch and aerate it, like all this good stuff. Um, so there's the, the positive benefit to the, the grass itself. There's the benefit to our family in that like, we're not mucking chicken stalls. Yeah. Like, to me, that I've never done that because I've always moved chickens. Yeah. Um, so whenever I see someone mucking a chicken stall every week, I'm just like, that's crazy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I what do you do? Yeah, yeah. What do, I do not want to touch chicken poop. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that's nice. And my kids know, like, once you move the chickens, there is some fresh, like, litter on the ground. Mm -hmm. And they just know not to walk through it. Yeah. And then within, like, a week in the rainfall, it's, like, completely gone. Yeah. Um, so there's that impact, the savings of feed costs. Yeah. So what, what was interesting is, like, once we had the chickens in the, in the coop, like, at first they freaked out when we moved it because they like didn't know what direction to right. to run. Mm -hmm. But within the first week or two, they figured it out, like even as young pullets, um, that as I am as I come out there and I grab that handle, they know I'm about to move it, and they all run to the front because they want to be the first ones to get bugs. Yeah. And so move it to fresh paddock. Isn't that crazy? Animals are they so figure smart. It out. Yeah, yeah, they're so smart. Yeah, I mean, like cattle are the same way. Yeah. If you're about to, they know who, it, their rancher is and they run up to that gate ready for him to take down that electric wire and they're, they're yeah. through it. They, they get the they get the message. Yeah, and so um, That's what we've noticed with the chicken So they're fighting over bugs and worms and mm -hmm. all this stuff even in a smaller footprint like that But they get fresh yeah. pasture every day mm -hmm. once they're laying eggs. We'll do it every every day We'll yeah. be moving them right now. It's every two days. So there's a benefit to uh, better eggs um, You know being able to get uh, chickens eating grass and bugs and stuff like that, you know, and then yeah, not having to deal with waste uh, Build helping build your soil and yeah. your grass and stuff like that. And you know, you're still gonna have a cost like If you go to tractor supply and buy a coop You'd probably spend a comparable amount and it wouldn't be likely rigid enough to be able to be moved. Yeah um, You know or or that that was what kind of another um, Motivation to start making these things mm -hmm. is like seeing how many uh, kits you could buy like online yeah um, that are like almost disposable like yeah. semi-disposable yeah. it's like they're made out of cheap wood um, like the, the, those rabbit hutches yeah. you know mm -hmm. um, and then you know who has one that's older than 10 years yeah um, nobody nobody because they just fall <laughs> apart and, they, and then you throw the whole thing in the trash yeah. and you go buy another one yeah. so you know I, I you know with the exception of the plastic the plastic would wear out but it provides a bit benefit of extra warmth and making it light yeah um, you know, and that's something too, that if someone didn't want the plastic and wanted to do the metal panels, they could do that. Yeah. Or if they wanted to make it really pretty and do like wood shingles, they could Ooh, do wood shingles. Oh, I mean, we're getting fancy. It could be real fancy. <laughs> like, yeah, you can modify it however you want to. Yeah. And that's, so that's kind of the idea is it's just a base model. If you want to do um, mounted feeders, if you want to put wood slats on the bottom and do rabbits, you can modify it however you yeah. want to best suit your need. Yeah, so I love that. I love that you saw a need and you took action to meet that need. So thank you. Uh, Sean built our greenhouse that's also really versatile. I ended up adding on the tables so I could use it for seed starting. And you know, just multi-purpose. If we ever don't use it for a seed starting greenhouse, we will use it for a chicken schooner and like mm -hmm. put a bunch of chickens in there. So I really do love that. This way too, with these slats, which we can actually kind of go closer and look, our rabbits are able to access, 
you know, they are natural diggers, so we were dealing with them digging out. Uh, but I think this way with the slats, because before we had kind of that hardware cloth and slats, just trying to see what would work best, they're actually gonna have access to more grass this way, I think. Mm -hmm knowing that we can't just completely leave it open, uh, even with moving them, because we're moving our rabbits every single day at this point, and they were still being creative yeah. and digging out. And, and that was the, like, I never intended to use this for rabbits. Yeah. But I think it's going to work well. Yeah. Like, um, now that we have the slats, like, that's part of the experiment. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't know, like, would rabbits still dig out if you were moving them every day? Yeah. Or, like, is that only the breeders? Mm -hmm. So neither one of us knew that. Yeah. So I'm glad we got to experience <laughs> it. We figured that out. <laughs> and, and work through all the kinks. Like, yeah. that's that's really the goal for the next mm -hmm. month is to get all the kinks worked out. Yeah. Um, make sure I'm getting things for as, you know, reasonable mm -hmm. uh, price as possible to get yeah. price down for folks. Yeah. Um, but so far, like, I've gotten the price down to what would be comparable if you went and built it out of wood. Yeah. And had to go to Lowe's and cut everything yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like you mentioned too, like this is super sustainable, right? Like this will last us aside from the plastic and it is recyclable, which is really important. So I mm -hmm. do appreciate how you just put a lot of thought and effort into doing this the right way. Um, matter of fact, and I don't think she would care that I say this, my sister just got chickens. She was also uh, in my video at your house. And so she goes uh, to a store and she buys this chicken coop that wasn't big enough. It, it just wasn't really well made and she ended up spending this money for nothing and ended up reaching out to you because it seems like this is kind of something that there's just not a lot that hits all the marks right it's uh -huh. like it's either too expensive and not practical or it's not sustainable it doesn't last a long time and so I feel like there's more and more filler products like that out there that just yeah. aren't meeting all the needs and yeah it's it, hard well it, and it's hard because like there's there's no, there's not a lot of products out there for like the in-between type producers. So yeah. like, and we've talked about this, like there's, there's products that are geared towards like home gardeners yeah. and then products that are geared towards market farmers. Mm -hmm. But like if you're selling part-time or maybe you're like a serious homesteader and doing a really large garden, like what, you don't need a 30 by 96 greenhouse, but a cheap little Harbor Freight one is not, not going to work. work. Yeah. And the same thing for the chicken coops too, is like there's these big prairie schooners you can get that are you know, almost 10 grand to move 500 chickens, That's but like insane. no homesteaders probably at that scale. Yeah. Um, but then like the next level down is like, there's really not mm -hmm. something out, out yeah. there or it's a kind of a pre-built, like, like prefab kind of kit from tractor supply yeah. and it, it may not last very long. Um, especially if you're trying to move it and stuff. So yeah. I'm trying to, you know, with the greenhouses, with the coops, um, with some of the tools that we're trying to come out with, it's like trying to hit that in between. Yeah. Uh, I don't know mid-scale kind, yeah, kind of person. So you guys know we partner with Sean and his wife Melanie quite a bit. We are doing lots of things on our new property that we will be moving to really soon. I foresee probably more of the things you're building on our farm as it just makes more sense for us. So Sean and I have some really cool visions and ideas that we're going to partner on and work together throughout the winter uh, for you guys. And so I'm just really excited to let you guys get to know him more because him and his wife and his whole family they mean so much to nathan and i and we really just support what you guys are doing like we get the vision with you guys and we want to see that through y'all um, are more than supporters y'all are, are <laughs> straight up cheerleaders like I, I i kid nathan about that all the time but he's like he should have been on the cheer squad he's Maybe such a good cheerleader, a good cheerleader. oh he's yeah he's, yeah he's, he's the best obviously love them very much and want to partner with them in any way that we can and so we have some really cool things in store in the future that i cannot wait uh, to tell you guys about in the meantime you guys will be seeing a lot more of sean on my channel as he is helping me with flowers um, and we're doing a lot of cool collaborative stuff together um he i will list all of his information below i'll put his youtube his instagram his email to get in contact with him so if you want to get on you know a little wait list until they have them available on their website for these i'll put all of his information down below for you guys to contact him with any questions you might have mm -hmm. i'm actually going to flip the camera around and we can just kind of show a little bit more even though it's an upside down yeah. turtle well, and i'll say too like we're probably going to sell them in batches yeah yeah so yeah. Okay. we'll release you know 40 and then cut it off cut it off yeah make them send them out yeah and then and then do that because we also still have to yeah. make all the tunnels and <laughs> yes like that. so needless <laughs> to say folks. if you want in on this get on in the first batch or you'll have to wait until the second batch mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is how far they're going to be spread apart so they are actually going to be getting quite a bit of grass i mean this is more than they had i think before on the other slats don't you think 
Yeah, yeah. The issue is the other slats they could they could lift up. Yeah, and, I, and these and they these, can't. these yeah. will be screwed down. They won't be able to. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where I'm trying to figure out is like what's the ideal spacing. Mm. Um, like while we most likely won't ship the wood slats because it just wouldn't be um, cost effective to to ship wood across the country. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely not, especially with wood prices. Yeah. Right now. Um, but. Uh, you know, we can do the guide, like say, hey, you need to at least, you know, no more than two inches between. So that's the kind of stuff we need that we're, we're working to figure out um, to where people can figure out what they need to do for whatever uh, type of animal group they're going to be putting in here. Okay, so another thing I wanted to ask you about, because I feel like this is probably some of the things we will get asked. Um, over here, he's got our water. There is a bucket that hooks up to this, and then this hooks up, and that's how they drink out of it. What is, like, what is your plan if someone buys this as far as like water, feeders, nest boxes? What does that look like? Yeah, so right now, the goal is to point people in the direction of like a good, better, best. So like I said with the nest box, like um, you could use milk crates as, you know, and that would be good enough. That's what a lot of folks use, and you can slide them in and out. Um, you could use um, kind of pre-made uh, boxes um, or like the, the all metal rollaway boxes. That's what I prefer. That might be the best option, but it's also the most expensive option. And so on our website, we'll just point people to kind of what uh, mat, like fits their budget. Yeah. Um, same thing with the watering systems. There's like a good, better, best. Um, you know, you could open the door and slide in a water every day that, that you already had on hand. That would cost pretty much zero dollars because you already had it. Um, but if you're moving the schooner every day, it's a pain to bring in and out waters. Mm -hmm. So like we set up the automatic uh, nipple drinkers for um, for you guys and for Brooke and, and for our, our own schooner. Um, and so what I'd probably do is just point folks to where to buy the parts and then we'll do a detailed YouTube video that'll just be free on how I make my waters. Um, and that'll just kind of live out there. So if, as long as folks want to learn from that and buy the parts themselves because for me to make it it would just add more costs yeah. to the project yeah, and sense. i'd have to mark up the materials and then charge for the labor to do it when you know it, it's really would be a 10 15 minute project for for somebody yeah okay cool All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and Sean tonight. I'm so glad that we got to hopefully answer a lot of the questions that you guys had about our rabbit tractor. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. But thanks for hanging out. We'll talk to you soon.